Welcome to our second video for chapter 1, which is sec section 1.2, Use Segments and Congruence. You will not need an, a calculator for today's video. We have two objectives. We're going to find segment lengths using betweenness, and we're going to determine whether segments are congruent. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this idea of betweenness. I'm not going to give you a formal definition. I just want to talk about kind of what betweenness means to us. So let's say we're talking about point X that's between A and B. Okay, A and B then are going to be my endpoints of some segment. And then X lies somewhere in between them. It's not necessarily in the middle, but it's just somewhere between A and B on that same line segment. That's the idea of betweenness. The reason we need this idea is we're going to be using it in the next two examples. You're going to have to generally draw out a figure. So let's look at first postulate 1, 6, and then we're going to jump into an example. So postulate 1, 6 is called the segment addition postulate. It says, if three points A, B, and C are collinear, and B is between A and C, then A plus B, AB plus BC equals AC. Okay, so let's try to draw this. It says point, points A, B, and C are collinear, so they're on the same line. B is between A and C. Okay, so that means A and C are my endpoints. And B is somewhere in between. We know they fall in the same segment because they're collinear. The postulate then says A, B, add B, C equals A, C. That should make sense. All that's saying is that I can add up the two small parts to make the bigger part. So I can take A, B, I can add B, C, and I get the whole segment. That should make sense. So that's called the segment addition postulate. And we're going to be using that in the first two examples. So example number one, it gives you R, S, S, T, and R, T. It tells you S is between R and T. So we're going to jump right in by drawing a figure. So S is between R and T. So that means R and T are my endpoints. S is somewhere in between those two. So I don't know exactly where, so I'm just going to pick somewhere. Now I know that RS is 3X minus 16. I know that ST is 4X minus 8. And I know that RT, the entire segment, is 60. Okay, so the question says, find RS and ST. Well, I know RS is 3x minus 16. I know that ST is 4x minus 8. I'll have numerical answers then for RS and ST if I find X. So the first thing that I need to do is find X and then substitute it back in. Well, I'm going to use the segment addition postulate. I know that RS add ST is going to give me RT. So add the two smaller parts, it's going to give me the bigger part. So RS is 3X minus 16, ST is 4X minus 8, and that's going to be equal to the entire segment, which is 60. Now we're going to combine like terms. 3X and 4X is going to give me 7X. Negative 16 and negative 8 is going to be negative 24. So I get 7X minus 24 equals 60. Add 24 to both sides. I get 7x equals 84. If I divide by 7, I get x equals 12. Okay, that's not my final answer though. The question is find rs and st. So I need to substitute back in now. rs is going to be 3 times 12 minus 16. 3 times 12 is going to be 36. So I get 36 minus 16. So RS is going to be 20. ST is going to be 4 times 12 minus 8. This is 48 minus 8. So ST equals 40. Okay, before we finish, I like to just think, does my answer make sense? So does it make sense that RS would be 20 and ST would be 40? The answer should be yes. OK, 
Okay, now why does it make sense? Let's think about it. Well, the entire segment is 60. So my two parts are going to have to add to be 60. 20 add 40 is 60, so my answers make sense. That was example one. Example two, you're going to do on your own. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video and complete example number two on your own. When you're completely finished and you have an answer, start the video again and I will go over it with you. Good luck. Okay, at this point, you should have had enough time to try this one on your own. The question first tells you that a, b is 25. It says find the value of x, find a, n, and n, b. So you should have used the segment addition postulate. You should have added a, n, and n, b. So you should have had 2x minus 6 plus x plus 7 equals 25. So you should have added your two parts to get your whole. And now combine like terms. On the left side, 2x and x is going to give me 3x. Negative 6 and positive 7 is going to give me positive 1. So I get 3x plus 1 equals 25. Subtract 1 from both sides and I get 3x equals 24. If I divide both sides by 3, I get x equals 8. Then you should have substituted back in. If I substitute 8 in to a n, I get 10. And for NB, you should have gotten 15. Double checking that these make sense. If I have 10 and 15, they both add up to 25, which looks good. If you didn't get 10 and 15, then you made a mistake somewhere and you need to go back and fix your mistake. If that applies to you, pause the video, go back and fix your mistake, and then move on to the rest of the video. Okay, so that was the first objective, that idea of betweenness. Now we're going to move on to the idea of congruence. Congruence just means that two objects have the same measure. So we're going to look at example three and then go back. So example three says find two segments that are congruent. So find two segments that are the same length. Okay, so from Z to W, I'm going from 2 to 6, that's 4 units in length. From Y to Z, if I count the boxes, that's 1, 2, 3, 3 units in length. From X to Y, count the boxes, is 1, 2, 3, 4 units of length. So which segments have the same measure? You know, those are going to be the segments that have a length of 4. They have the same length, the same measure. So we would say X, Y and z, w are congruent. They have the same measure, the same length in this case. The symbol for congruence is going to be an equal sign with a tilde over the top. So that's what you're seeing up here um, in the middle right. That's the symbol for congruence. So this means that two segments have the same length but we actually don't know the length so that that would be the notation you would use if you knew that they had the same length but you didn't actually know what that length was this notation on the left this is when they have the same length, and you actually know what that length is. So if I were to tell you that A, B, and C, D were both 10 units, you would say A, B equals C, D. We know what that length is. Generally, though, you're going to see this notation right here. 
This is really, really important. We're going to be talking about congruence for the rest of the year. So just keep that symbol in the back of your mind. That symbol means congruent. That was the first page of notes, so if you want to flip the page and we can continue. Okay, so example number four. It says use the diagram below to find Wx. So this one I think you can do. Take a minute, pause the video, and do example four on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Some of you could probably do this just by looking at it. I'm gonna have a little bit of a more formal setup than you may have had. So we're, we wanna find Wx, I'm gonna call that A, since I don't know what it is. Now, using the segment addition postulate, I can add two smaller segments to get the bigger segment. The two smaller segments in this case are 37 and A, so I have 37 add A equals 144. Now if I subtract 37, you should have gotten A to be 107, so Wx is 107. Again, some of you probably could have just looked at the figure and said, oh, I know to subtract, but generally you should have gotten the answer to be 107. Uh, you don't have to have this set up if you can do it in your head. We have one last example to do together, and then you're going to do one on your own. So example five, it says plot the given points. Determine whether the line segments RS and TU are congruent. So right now, I want you to take a minute and plot those points, and I'm going to do the same. Okay, this is what you should have gotten. The question is, determine whether the segments R, S, and T, U are congruent. So I'm going to draw in those segments. I'm going to draw in R, S, and then I'm going to draw in T, U. Okay, so we have to remember that congruent means they have the same measure. Okay, in this case, we're talking about line segments. The way we measure line segments is with length. So the question is really asking, do RS and TU have the same length? Well, let's find the length. For RS, I just need to count the boxes. So I have one, two, three, four boxes. So RS is four units long. For TU, I'm going to count the boxes again. So I have one, two, three, four. So TU is also four units long. So in this case, are they congruent? Well, yes, the two segments are congruent. So we would say yes, R. S is congruent to T U. And I'm going to say they are both four units long. Okay, that's the end of the notes with me. You still have an example that you have to do on your own. So, first thing we talked about out of these objectives on the left, we talked about betweenness, and that's where we use the segment addition postulate. Then we determined whether segments were congruent. We determined if segments had the same length. You have this example on the right to do on your own. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to make sure you have all the notes done and this example completed. If you don't know, at least attempt the problem. If you get it wrong, that's okay. As a little bit of a hint, I'm going to tell you that the Sorry, that the final answer is CD equals 13. So when you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to check all the notes and this problem. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down so that you don't forget them before tomorrow. See you tomorrow.